Our No Days Off segment continues. This week, we're spotlighting the newest head football coach of the Waite Indians, Brian Lee. At only 25 years old, he's managed to already make a name for himself in the City League. A coach with ever-flowing energy and passion for the game sat down with me to talk the adversity and triumphs that come along with being a first-year head football coach. Week one, you told us coaching this high school football team was your dream job. We're now in the trenches. Week eight, is it still your dream job? Oh, it's just, it's, this is where, I, um, I honestly, this is what I expected it to be. Um, this is the part in the season where um, you face adversity. We on the two game losing streak. How do we bounce back? How do I bounce back? How do my staff bounce back? Um, it's easy to win. If winning, winning don't judge your wisdom or your coaching at all. It's all about how you bounce back from losses. Two in a row, we got to bounce back to deal with that adversity, what, what do you tell them? Take a deep breath. It's just high school football, enjoy it. It's all about the memories. If everybody geared up to win, there wouldn't be no losers. So I tell everybody, take it one day at a time, one play at a time. Hey seniors, you only get three left. Let's go all having fun. Let's not, the start week we took it personal and we didn't have fun. It wasn't fun, my sideline wasn't fun. It was just too tense. When we have fun, good results happen. What's the hardest thing about being a one-year head coach so far? Um, facing different adversity as far as when you come into a program, you got to inherit it, um, the good and the bad. So as a first-year head coach, um, making sure your kids are on time in class, getting ready for them phone calls from the principal, hey, this kid is skipping school, hey, this kid is slacking in this class. Those are some different challenges that you don't see as an assistant coach. As a head coach, as a first year, I give anybody advice. Get ready for grades and disciplinary problems. Yeah, everything that happens off the field. Off the field. It, it's, it's off the field. one of the biggest things, and we've talked before, you consider this job to be more than just a job. You yeah. help these players with their homework sometimes. Why do you consider this more than just coaching a high school football? Um, when you, high school football, I say about three out of a whole team go to college. So let's say if my team is 50 kids, that's 47 kids that need a job, guidance, and love. Even if you're in college, you need the same thing. Once I went to college, I didn't get that love because of, I just, it just wasn't offered for me. I took that loss. I would never let my kids take the same loss. Um, it's about the love outside of the field, checking on them, calling on them. I call Pratt all the time. At 12 at night, hey, what you doing up? What you doing, coach? Just checking on you, making sure you're at home safe. The little things, because you never know that I love you might be the only I love you they hear. That, hey, I'm checking on you might be the only, hey, I'm checking on you. You hungry? That might be the only person that ever asks this kid is they hungry. You got to make sure your kids is all right, because high school football, you're more than just a coach. Your dad, an uncle, a brother, supporter, cheerleader, whatever it is, you got to be it. When did you decide that you wanted to become a coach and take on all of these other roles? Um, my sophomore year at Siena Heights, um, Coach Cohn was like, Brian, you're one of the best four players I coach, but sometimes the game exceeds yourself. And it, didn't, and it didn't dawn on me what he was saying, like, hey, Brian, you so passionate, you love the game. you got a longer career in working with the game than trying to play the game. It's okay to step away and coach the game. That was the hardest decision, but the best decision I made. Who's your biggest mentor in coaching? Um, it was a guy named Gardner Howard, okay? When Gardner Howard passed, Matthew Wortham took his place. One thing that Coach Matt and I do share is the raw passion and the love for the game. He's more mature and he harnessed his a lot more. So every game always called him, he always got something to say. Um, when you have someone like that, that came from the same environment, Matt went to the East Side, he from the East Side, he coached over here. Then he had success at start in over here. So I asked him all the time, what is your formula? He tell me patience. Stay true to the game and stay true to the process. Patience. You're one of the most energized people on these sidelines. How do you exercise patience? Um, it's very hard. My assistant's got to scream to me a lot. Brian, patience, patience, patience. The kids cannot see the game as you. Bring the game to them. Once, it took me into about four weeks to really understand that sometimes your kids can't do exactly what you do. Playing, as a, playing football in high school, I was a pretty okay athlete. And I expect high things. Sometimes my kids just can't do it. Okay, how can we coach them up to get close to that? 25 year old coach, can you relate to these players on the field at all? I know they're in high school, but you're young. You're okay. being a high school coach. Can okay. you still relate to them? See, the things that they hated as kids, I hated as a college athlete. So we eliminate that. I don't um, scream at my kids. I, t I, I use my voice, but I really don't scream and belittle them. It's more of a educational, um, hey, this is how we do it. You gotta show them. If they've never been shown right, you can't scream. Um, the biggest thing with my agent to them is they, they, can feel, they feel like we're so close that they can trust me. 
that they can believe more in me. Uh, my staff is all way older than me. I'm the younger one. I'm the baby out of everyone. Um, the closest guy to my age is 30. Everybody else is fur beyond me. Um, it just, when you got the, a coach or someone on your team that you feel like you can bond with them more, you kind of tell them more. You kind of click with them more. I think my age has been a key success over here because it's just, I tell them, hey, I, I'm not too much far removed from this thing. We both building our resumes. Let's do this together. So when people say, hey, he's not that experienced in coaching because he's only 25, what do you say to them? What is experience? Learning, going through stuff. Um, if you never go through it, you never get that experience. There's coaches that have been coaching for 40 years that never probably lost twice in a row. It's all about going through things, learning through them things. I'm not perfect, but I'm willing to learn. I'm willing to call Coach Rose, Coach Dempsey, anybody, Coach James in Northwood. I'll call anybody for advice. I'm an open book and I'm waiting for advice. What's the biggest thing you think you can improve on since eight weeks in from now um, until in the future? Time management. Understanding that everything, every distraction don't get your time. You gotta know how to put each time into each category in practice. Like practice, when you schedule your practice, you gotta make sure that you give the proper time for special teams, the proper time for individuals, the proper team, the proper time for team, and sometimes you can't overload your team. Take time, take patience. Relax, young grasshopper, it's okay. How many milestones has this team reached since you've taken over as head coach? Week one every every week. Um, to me, I tell my kids, Down. week by week, we get better. Right. Um, let's keep getting better. Let's keep being Bush, great football he's got him in. Last year, we, won, the we only won three games. We won four in our first six. Let's do that. <laughs> now, let's continue oh, this path. My. Last year, they finished you, out on three in a row. Let's repeat three in a row. We'll let's be seven and three, here. something the Just program a hasn't did in about 20 hole. years. What is it taking day in and day out to get that many wins for this team? Every day struggle. It starts in practice, Monday through Thursday. Um, that's where we win at. When we come out to practice, I tell my kids, let's win the day, let's win today. Live the dream, enjoy yourself. Even if you gotta give me fake energy, I need it. Um, what are you hoping to change about the culture of this week football program? I want parents to feel like Coach Lee can take care of their kids. I'm here to be a father mentor for your kids. I don't wanna go nowhere. I want all the eighth graders, the seventh graders, the sixth graders, anybody that's listening, trust in me. I could do the same thing a lot of these other schools is doing. Plus, I give your kid a little bit more love. Let's go! The Wait Indians can now finish their season out with two more wins. We will, of course, keep you up to date on Coach Lee and the Indians throughout the rest of City League play.